OK, I'm trying to compose an introduction for the next general election because at Hustings you get introduced, I think, 100, 150 words or something. So this is probably going to be longer, but it's my best shot running around my head at this moment in time. Paul Crossland is an innovator. He therefore um, receives much opposition from those who are um, late adopters or laggards, to use the classification from Malcolm Gladwell's The Tipping Point. You won't know that Paul Crossland was at the tipping point until we're well beyond the tipping point. Unfortunately, the tipping point that is of greatest concern at present is that which uh, is about the future of mankind um, in business. Oh on this planet. So Paul believes that the things he's saying can determine whether we cross that tipping point or not and that we all need a more caring and sharing society. If you ask him a question which to him implies that you're in the late majority or a laggard, he'll ask you what your track record on innovation is. So here is his. Starting with the criminal justice agencies who awarded the team for which he was the driving force um, at a, an event called Jailbreak, um, that's A-K-E, um, Jailbreak. Um, it was a social innovation camp uh, event and it was judged by criminal justice agencies. They were looking for the mobile or web app that could do most to reduce youth offending and youth custody. And Paul's safe ground team was the winning um, was was the winning offering. So you see a very different Paul Crossland with his experience as a mediator and criminal justice worker and an amazing idea, um, though he says it himself, <laughs> well the judges said it too. Um, you see that if you look up the right things on on Facebook, uh, not Facebook, YouTube, or go th trawl through his rather extensive 2066.uk blog. Um, he's put it there before the 2019 general election material. Okay, um, prior to that, I think it was probably about 2009, um, the leading environmental think tank recognised that um, the work he'd done on freelander.org was years ahead of its time in prefiguring the low carbon economy. So out of the first piece of work that I mentioned, um, a safe space, um, as it became call called, um, and then peoplesjustice.org.uk um, it became called. Um, <sighs> and it was re referred to extensively on sussexcommunity.blogspot.com. That led, oh sorry, the number one website for it is restorativetechnology.blogspot.com because that is where, uh, because um, 9,000 pounds of funding was awarded and by the National Endowment for Science, Technology and the Arts and um, it was, what happened um, and the upshot of that yeah a company was set up restorative technology limited which is one of three companies of which Paul is a director boy this is going to be hard to condense to 150 words but please help me if you can okay so um, prior to that the think tank recognition came from the leading environmental think tank forum for the future and I've said what they said um, funding didn't come from them, but um, in the field of nonviolent communication, which has now greatly influenced um, some of Extinction Rebellion's one-to-one -one work, not the mass protest work, but how uh, if you've had a conversation with a, a well-trained Extinction Rebellion activist, it may be informed by the techniques, if not unfortunately the spirit of Marshall Rosenberg. So um, he's... Um, Paul put on Marshall Rosenberg in 2006 um, in London um, and launched um, with him, although he wasn't quite as involved as intended, websites Apology Plus 
and uh, communicatingneeds.org. Those sites lasted 12 years, um, but uh, a number of issues have uh, stopped them moving forward. Um, I'm always interested in web developers who want some amazing ideas to put into play because I believe there's still plenty of scope for interactive um, emotional intelligence websites that help people uh, disentangle um, problems and find solutions uh, or strategies for moving forward to address everyone's needs. Um, so, oh yes, although the Forum for the Future didn't in recognising um, three innovators, of which Paul and Edmund Johnson's uh, Freelander.org was one of them, um, and basically the forerunner of Airbnb was another, um, and a land sharing website, the third. Um, so, yeah, although no funding followed, uh, Paul's work in nonviolent communication inspired someone who just inherited some money to become a um, benefactor to the tune of nearly £15,000, which along with all the credit card debt Paul uh, accumulated enabled him to be a freelance community development worker in St Leonard's. Paul situated himself at the Southwater Area Community Centre but is not there any longer um, because of what he was told about the location of the main perpetrator of the fire on 5th of October 2010 and though he worked very hard to bring that individual and others um, who were um, associated with the fire um, into a community um, mediation process through Amber Rudd and the then um, minister, sub-minister for the Ministry of Justice, John Gignogli, a former colleague of his at Oxford Polytechnic, um, an MP for Huntington, um, Paul couldn't, uh, the Ministry of Justice was not willing to uh, grant an immunity from prosecution um, in order that a community mediation could take mediation process could take place about the peer fire. So, um, Paul set up as a community development worker, and what happened next? Uh, or what does he want to say about this? Um, oh yeah, the thing that he's proudest of that he created uh, is called St Leonard's Sharing Consortium. Now, um, you know, even people who run community centres um, have said, I've never heard of it. Um, <laughs> in a somewhat dismissive tone. It's actually Paul's proudest work. It just hasn't come to fruition yet um, because in a way there are too many innovators and not enough followers. So obviously Paul seeks followers uh, but not just followers. Followers who are organised enough to have set up an organisation to be the director of a company like Paul is the director of um, Mediation Support Limited and runs the Festival of the New Society based out of land owned by that company in, in Wales. Um, so the three companies of which Paul is a director are Mediation Support Limited, Free Landing CIC, which aspires to buy the neighbouring field and bring that into community ownership because uh, we need to have um, more of a plan for um, communities to have their hinterlands uh, food in their hinterlands um, that, with which they're closely involved. That's one of Paul's political policies and he's filmed individuals in St Leonard's who have experience of European food co-ops um, or one person in particular talking about that and spoken in the interview from the 25th of November 2019, the Ryan News interview, in some length about the dynamics of how 50 people could get much more closely associated with the farmers and get their food in every every week, each taking a week off work to, um, to drive the van effectively um, that brings the food to those 50 households. Um, and build a connection with the agricultural workers. Of course we need a larger return to the land by people um, and a taxing of land um, so that more of it does get returned to the people. Um, but I think I've gone over 150 words now, haven't I? That will do as the kind of things that Paul wants to be known for without going into all of his other backgrounds. Um, 
but uh, he has put up films that are quite memorable under the title What I Did That Led to Hastings Pier Fire. <laughs>